Hello and welcome to the channel. If you are new here, then hi, my name is Brittany. I'm a nurse practitioner. If you are a returning subscriber, then welcome back. I'm happy to have you here as always. Much of the content I put on my channel here is educational for not only the licensed nurse practitioner, but also nurse practitioner students. And as you probably know, I have completed multiple different nurse practitioner boards reviews in the past. Some of them have been delivered here on YouTube, and then I've also collaborated with Archer in the past and delivered them with that company as well. I've taken back to my review course. I've revamped it again. This time I'm delivering it a little bit differently though. Part of it will be on YouTube here and the entire course itself will be on Patreon. For today's lecture we're going to be talking all about ears, eyes, nose, and throat for the AANP and the ANCC exams. This video however on YouTube is a shortened version. To get access to the complete video and the complete audio files for the nurse practitioner licensing exam then follow the link in the description description box below that will take you to my Patreon. The total review course launches on February 27th, 2023, in which you pay a monthly access fee. Please, of course, enjoy this free video to help you study, and then, of course, to access those complete audio files, make sure to become a patron and join the tier titled ANCC and AANP exam prep course. Again, that complete course does not fully launch until February 27th. I just want to make sure and give you guys a sneak peek of everything that is to come. So without further delay, though, let's dive into ears, eyes, nose, and throat for the nurse practitioner boards exam. So first up, let's talk about some ear complaints. So acute otitis media, or AOM for short, this is primarily an infection of childhood. However, adults can get acute otitis media as well. Most cases of this, though, does occur in young children, typically between the ages of 6 and 24 months. The incidence does decline significantly after 5 years of age. A bacterial ear infection, this is typically a result from impaired functioning of that eustachian tube, and it builds up or it results in a buildup of fluid. And this can be a result from, you know, upper, upper respiratory infection that the child had or individual had, or allergic rhinitis, but the idea idea is that it occurs from impaired function of that eustachian tube. So symptoms of AOM, so they typically present with unilateral otalgia or ear pain, bulging and erythematous tympanic membrane on your exam, and potentially conductive hearing loss. And we're going to go into hearing loss a little bit more here in a minute, but just for your knowledge, AOM, this can cause conductive hearing loss. Diagnosis of this is made on clinical exam in the presence of that bulging tympanic membrane and the treatment for acute otitis media is oral antibiotic. So for the pediatric population, strategies to manage AOM, so there's a couple different approaches. Immediate treatment with antibiotics, this is one approach, and then there is a wait and see approach. And the wait and see, this is a delayed starting of antibiotics. If the signs or the symptoms for the patient fail to improve with just conservative uh, treatment for 48 to 72 hours, then antibiotics are started. But the idea is that you wait and see if they're going to worsen or get better without antibiotics. Patients that are appropriate to use this wait and see approach would be patients that are at least two years of age with unilateral acute otitis media without severe symptoms and without otorrhea. And otorrhea is when they have the drainage from the ear. Patients that are poor candidates for this wait and see approach would be infants less than six months of age. Uh, any patient that's immunocompromised Patients that have cranial facial abnormalities, such as a cleft palate, uh, because there's a little bit of an increased risk there, and then anyone that appears toxic, so very ill. Since the predominant causative agent for AOM is streptococcus, the antibiotic choice covers, of course, this bacteria. Other common bacterial causes would be H. influenzae and M. Cateralis, but streptococcus pneumoniae is the most common causative agent for AOM. So the first line treatment for acute otitis media is amoxicillin. Also, there's amoxicillin with clavulanate, also known as augmentin, and that's preferred if the patient has either had recent acute otitis media, recent antibiotic use, or if they've had treatment failure. Acute otitis externa now, so this is also referred to as swimmer ear, and this is more common in the warm, those humid seasons, particularly in those patients that have recently gone swimming. 
Symptoms of this include external altagia, so the outside of the ear is very, very tender to the touch, discharge, puritus, so itching, potential hearing loss if there is either sufficient pus or swelling present. And treatment for acute otitis externa includes otic or ear antibiotic drops. It's important to note that if the tympanic membrane is either ruptured, ruptured or if you can't actually get a good visualization of that tympanic membrane, then you just assume that it's ruptured and you don't give any medications that are ototoxic. If, you, if it's ruptured or if you can't tell if it's ruptured or not, then you have to be safe and avoid any medications going into the ear that are ototoxic. So ototoxic medications are neomycin, gentamicin, and tobramycin. Those agents that end in mycin, do not give those to those patients. Also, if their tympanic membrane is ruptured, it's really important that they avoid submerging underwater until that tympanic membrane is confirmed to be healed. All right, so now let's talk about sinusitis. So the most common etiology of acute rhinosinusitis, also known as just plain old sinusitis, is viral, believe it or not. <laughs> this is a pretty frequent education point working in the urgent care for me. But bacterial infection with sinusitis occurs only in 0.5 to 2% of episodes. So a treatment for the acute viral sinusitis, this is just symptomatic management. Typically, it does resolve in 7 to 10 days. And so it's important then to know, you know, what indicates it to be a bacterial sinus infection. So symptoms of a bacterial sinus infection would be purulent nasal discharge, severe nasal congestion, sinus pressure, facial pain for at least 10 days, or symptoms that are seemingly improving and then worsen. Treatment for a bacterial sinus infection is antibiotics. So first line includes amoxicillin or augmentin if that patient does not have risk factors for resistance. Risk factors for resistance would include if the patient is 65 years and older, if they've had hospitalization within the last five days, if they've had antibiotic use within that last month, if they're immunocompromised or they have multiple comorbidities present, or if they're severely ill with their sinusitis. Then that first line amoxicillin or augmentin is not appropriate and you would use other options like doxycycline, clindamycin, sometimes a respiratory fluoroquinolone such as levofloxacin, but as always with those fluoroquinolones, we really want to reserve those for patients that either cannot afford to have treatment failure or if they have significant allergies and it's really like your last resort. Mm -hmm.